if the aberration is uh, there then it will affect not only the trajectories but also the image size shape and uh, of course the locations also that will change now so far we were talking about uh, 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 particle trajectories now uh, there are two kinds of beam one is uh, or two kinds of accelerators actually one is called low current accelerators where we get uh, uh, low currents at the output also and uh, other one are called high currents uh, uh, accelerators and uh, there are many applications where high currents are required uh, for example for nuclear physics experiments low currents are good enough because the cross section could be high or you would like to have a very clean data while uh, in many cases like uh, accelerator driven systems high currents are required because the number of neutrons produced and hence the power generated is proportional to the current now uh, so the trajectory calculations in both the cases are totally different the type of beam uh, image you can get are totally different for example if you take a low current then you can uh, you can even uh, you are required to track track the particle single particle so you have to do a single particle trajectory calculation while in the case of uh, high current accelerators uh, that is no more true so you have to you have to do a different collective motion you have to take into and you will see in later i have explained that in the high current accelerator the particle uh, make a sort of envelope uh, they move in the envelope so you have to trace the envelope rather than the single particles so in the case of low currents um, you have to do the par particle trajectory calculations and system particularly through uh, 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 particularly like accelerating tube in the case of dc accelerators uh, accelerating tube is the most important part of it and uh, accelerating tubes have cylindrical symmetry so that makes our life uh, simple calculations can be simple but you have to minimize the aberration by properly designing the accelerating tube uh, shape as well as the voltage distribution you will see in the following slides that not only the uh, the electrode shapes but also the voltage distribution which you are uh, putting across the accelerating tube matters a lot uh, in in uh, ex, uh, in focusing the beam so what ultimately you have to do is if you want to uh, design a uh, proper uh, proper system then this accelerating tube has to be designed based on the based on the ion trajectories and for that as we mentioned earlier did we we did in the case of lens also that you have to solve the equations of motion for the charge particle through the ion optical components you have to do right from the ion source up to the target of course in this case the accelerating tube plays a most important role now if you have uh, as in the case of dc accelerators if you have uh, a uh, accelerating tube and particle is moving along the z axis then it will have the rotational symmetry that means theta symmetry and therefore the potential distribution so the ion ultimately we have to do the ion optics so uh, this ion optics uh, that means you have to follow the ion trajectories you have to calculate the ion trajectories using the potential distribution and so first uh, it involved two steps one is that you have to uh, calculate the potential distribution and using those potential distribution you have to calculate the trajectories so if you have uh, cylindrical symmetry accelerating tube then the potential distribution is uh, coming from will have this poisson's equation and uh, this is shown here and poisson's equation will give you the potential distribution and here you can see on the right hand side rho is the charge density and i am considering the first case where the current is very low and if that is the case then this rho can be neglected so you can put right hand side to equal to 0 and that is true only if the currents are very small 
otherwise you have to solve this poisson's equation however if the if the currents are low and space charges are not there currents are small then you can charge density negligible and therefore you can solve potential distribution can be obtained not by uh, you don't have to solve that equation you have can solve the laplace equation by putting right hand equal, right hand side equal to zero and in the in the coordinates where now i am cylindrical coordinates where i am having uh, r or theta and z z is the beam axis direction and it is a it is having a theta symmetry then this equation can be converted into like so this is the equation we have to solve for getting the potential distribution lag square so what it effectively it amounts to, you can see that distribution means you have to from the trajectories you have to calculate r the position and uh, uh, as a function of z and uh, this equation uh, uh, will give you the potential distribution and then you have to solve the force uh, equations using the potential distribution which you have got from the calculation of by solving the laplace equation so these are the two equations you have to solve and they can be in cartesian coordinate they can be or they can be written as in even cylindrical coordinates z and r and theta so theta will not appear because at each theta the r will be same and therefore you have to solve these two equation for ion optics calculations so uh, in the in the nutshell it is beam optics involved calculation of r as a function of z r z in electrostatic field which you have calculated using either the uh, either the uh, poisson's equation in the case uh, for high current or uh, Uh, or uh, the uh, laplace equation when the current is very small and as i mentioned earlier that uh, uh, in the case when the currents are pretty high uh, then this does not behave like a particle alone it behaves like a collective of particles and collective of particles you will see later on that uh, they do not behave individually but they behave in a collective manner and there is something called uh, Uh, it, uh, it all the particles are contained in a ellipse rather than rather than a point so in the case of uh, in this case uh, i have taken a very simple example of uh, 2 million volt tandem accelerator built at brc and that is because these calculations were done and based on the calculation the accelerator was built and uh, the actual measurements and the calculations were matched and uh, they matched very well and of course we learned a lot from this so i will be taking the examples of this uh, this case in this case you will see uh, some of the conclusions were that uh, when you do the calculations then you have to take sufficient fringing fields so calculations of potential distribution b which is a function now of r and z with the theta symmetry then shape of the electrodes the direction of the electrodes and the potential gradient all are important and fringing fringing effects have to be accounted for otherwise you will not get the correct results and that is what we found it also and of course then you have to this, so these are the two things and if anybody is interested in more details they can see this uh, references in this case now uh, this is the first column section of the 2 mv tandem uh, which was uh, built at brc and it worked for uh, several years and uh, you can see this accelerating tube which we are talking about it can have different shapes as i said the shape matters and you can see that if the beam is going like this then the electrode can either be straight you can see this is straight here separate by certain distance or they can be inclined they can be inclined but this in this shape can be either towards the uh, input side or it can be towards output side you will see the results are totally different now in the case of uh, our present case the tandem accelerator we took this based on the calculations and the actual measurements 
we do, did all the measurements in both the cases. See, if you reverse it here, then this will be the geometry. If you put it like this, then this is the geometry. And then you will see that the results were totally different and the performance of the accelerator was uh, totally different. Earlier, prior to these things, we found that in most of the literature, accelerating tubes were used like this. And uh, uh, it was found that the transmission was not very good. When we changed this, these electrodes like this, uh, which is shown here, then the transmission increased remarkably. Now, these are the electrodes. These are stainless steel electrodes and they are separated by glass insulators here and which is rough. So, these electrodes, they are fixed voltage electrodes. You are only calculating the potential distribution in this region where the beam is going. So, let's say the beam is, let's say the beam is going, uh, beam is going in this way then you have to calculate the field distribution or the voltage distribution in this region, this region, and then calculate the uh, trajectories along this. And this was done, but uh, this, these electrodes are applied there. Now, there are two ways of uh, applying. One is, you can say, the, see here it is, here this is a part of the accelerating, uh, this uh, beam line, which is grounded, zero potential. So you apply 0, you can apply 0, 40, 80, like this is called constant gradient. That means the voltage difference between all of them is equal. And let's say it is 40 or 50 or whatever. Other cases that you can apply 0 here and then it is 10, 20, 40, like this. That means in first few sections you apply some variable gradient. And uh, you will find that there is a remarkable difference. You can see that in the case of variable gradient, this is the constant gradient and this is variable gradient. And you can see that voltage distribution is here. And one thing you can notice here that the fringing field goes at least four to five times of the aperture of this accelerating tube. So you have to calculate this potential distribution up to quite a large distance because this this is going to make a, such a great difference. You can see here the ion trajectories calculated for this potential distribution. Here you can see that is not constant gradient. It is 0, 10, 20, 40 like this. It is going on. So first few electrodes, the gradient is lower and then it is constant. And then after that it does not matter because the velocity or the speed of the particle has already increased and therefore force, forcing focusing effect will not be too much disturbed by will not be affected by this voltage distribution. So you can see that how nicely we get this. Uh, uh, this is a tandem accelerator. So there is a, in the center there is a, a stripper where the negative ions uh, get converted to positive. So in this region it is positive. Here this is a stripper. Here is stripper. So you can see that how nicely the trajectories are passing through a very small region of the a small region of the stripper. While if you take this, uh, if you take uh, uh, right from the beginning a constant gradient, that means it is zero, it is 40, 80, 120 like this. That means 40 kV per section. Then the for the same parameter, for same input parameters, you can see that. In some cases, the trajectories are diverging, and therefore they are uh, they are uh, not passing through the stripper, and those ions will be lost. In fact, even even in this case, which is passing through that, you will find that this uh, where by the time they reach the second accelerating tube, target is like this. Uh, experimental target is there, but uh, the uh, beam will be passing through some other place and it will be completely missing the target and experiment will not be. So you can see that if you compare this, this is the ion trajectory for corresponding to this variable gradient and this is ion trajectory corresponding to constant. And you can see a remarkable difference between these two. And this is far far. So you can see that two effects are there which I talked about. One is the shape is mattering. 
second is the you are your fringing field here which you have accurately calculated we calculated up to a distance where the voltage becomes very small really negligible till that time we calculate of course it will take more computer time but it um, give more accurate however uh, so one is shape the shape then gradient and then the fringing field all three are making huge effect you will see in the later one the calculations are not properly done that transmission of the beam lowers down considerably now i mentioned there that the shape as well as the size of the beam at the output on the target will uh, really matter based on the aberrations you can see that here i am injecting all the parallel beams with this and uh, with that field distribution this is for the first one which is a variable and here it is uh, for constant one and you can see here that in the case of variable gradient case the uh, the, the focal length as a function of r is always rising uh, with r if it is uh, focal length is increasing always it is called negative uh, negative spherical aberrations however in the case of this uh, where, where where it is a constant gradient first it becomes neg it is negative but then the uh, as the particle moves away from the optical axis it changes the spherical it changes the uh, sign of the aberration and it becomes positive here which is not a good thing and uh, this was the conclusion we have gone from this and uh, you should have only one type of aberration whether it is negative or positive because correcting that becomes simple so this was the if this were the trajectories based on it. and of course the calculations we did for uh, uh, entire accelerator involving both the accelerating tubes uh, low energy as well as with the common dome common high voltage uh, and uh, you can see that if you inject a heavy heavy particle like for example this calculation is for the uh, mass is equal to 40 and, and these calculations were done for uh, tandem accelerator which requires injection of negative ions. so is arbitrary a is equal to 40 i have taken and uh, if you calculate the trajectory throughout then as the charge state increases energy increases and then you will see that uh, uh, the, treasure, the beam dimension keeps coming down because you know that once the particle has moved and if the charge state is high the force will be stronger and it will be focused more and more and therefore the beam size on the target will become small and that is what is shown here so all this depends on potential distribution that is the shape and the direction of the electrode this is the this was the conclusion and this was almost done uh, not very uh, regularly done in the literature and therefore uh, this was a sort of uh, good finding of this uh, study which we did.